Hi everybody and welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. So today I'll be presenting to you a new and improved design of a 3 speed automatic gearbox using the powered up functionality. And So this design came about from an improvement on a design that I presented about 4 weeks ago now using again the powered up functionality. And I, I hadn't actually used powered up much before and I was really excited to use it and some of the uh, functionality that powered up gives you is the ability to be able to measure exactly a lot of the motor characteristics so for example this is one of the powered up motors it's the extra large model and by using the, um, the hub and an app on for example an iPhone or an iPad or something like that you can actually uh, measure and control a motor very precisely so for example you can set uh, the exact angle for the motor so you can tell it to go to a particular position you can also set a particular speed uh, speed of rotation but not only that you can also measure both of those so for example you can ask the hub and say, well, what is the angle of this motor? It might be zero degrees, might be 90, or any other particular position. And also, on top of that, you can also measure the speed of rotation of the motor. And I thought, well, this is great. I can use some of this new functionality in my automatic gearboxes. And because one of the issues in the gearbox is you have to somehow measure the torque at the output in order to make a gear-changing decision. Now, normally, I've always done that using a differential in between the input and output. So for example, in this small example here, if I'm rotating the input, you can see the output rotate. But as soon as I put some loading on that output by holding it still, you can see that the differential in the middle will start rotating. And that rotation of that differential can be used to apply the torque on the system um, by looking at the deflection of that angle. So for example, uh, without using the powered up hub, uh, you can just simply connect some sort of gear changing mechanism onto the axle directly. But I thought, well, with the powered up functionality, what I can do, I can just connect a motor onto that axle and then measure the angle of deflection and therefore get a torque measurement that I can use to make a gear changing decision. So that's what I did in this particular design that I presented four weeks ago and that made it uh, quite large because I needed an extra motor for the um, torque detection, I needed the motor to drive the gearbox and one motor for the gear changing mechanism. And when I presented this I had a lot of feedback from users saying, well, or viewers saying, well, hang on, why didn't you just use the powered up app or the hub to measure the torque of your motor and I thought well I don't know how to do that I've never seen that uh, as one of the possible functions you can move measure angle you can measure uh, the speed but not torque so how do you measure the torque of a motor in the powered up app well I'll just keep watching and I'll show you all right so how do we measure the torque experienced by a motor or the loading on a motor well all we need to do is to exploit the relationship between the speed of a motor and the torque or the loading on the motor itself so this blue line here shows you that relationship so what it shows is that as the loading is increasing the speed of the motor will decrease so in this particular example here we've got the uh, speed of the motor on the left axis so that's revolutions per minute on the bottom axis there we've got the torque in newton centimeter so again it's a linear relationship so as the torque increases the speed linearly decreases and so obviously if there's zero torque or loading on the motor we end up with the maximum speed around 330 rpm that's for the uh, powered up extra large motor and then as we get a maximum loading around 20 newton centimeters the motor will stall so what that means is simply that if you know the speed of the motor, you can very easily work out the loading or the torque on the motor. So I'll just demonstrate that simply with this particular app that I've got on the right here. Um, this pretty much has a start button, stop button, and a speed measurement dial. So I'll just turn that on. So now we can see the speed. So the speed here in this case is 100, and that doesn't correspond to the RPM. It corresponds to the percentage. So at the moment we're going at 100% speed, or 100, um, you know, 100% of the maximum speed around 330 rpm then as I put some loading on that motor we can see that the speed decreases and for example if I drop that speed or that loading to 50% that means now that the torque will be 50% of maximum torque because of that linear relationship so now I've dropped the speed down to 50% so the torque will be around 10 newton centimeters, about half of the maximum torque so that is a very easy way of measuring torque on your motor and then you can use that to make a decision regarding the automatic gear switching so depending on the torque loading that you reach uh, you want to switch down to a lower gear to be able to increase uh, the output of the overall system and slow it down but increase the output torque okay so now that we know how to calculate the torque just given uh, based on the speed of the motor the next question is at what point should the automatic gearbox be switching gears 
Well, in order to answer that question, what I've done is I've plotted a power curve. And based on this power curve, we can calculate uh, the appropriate switching points for the automatic gearbox. So what this curve is showing is the orange curve over here. It's showing the um, relative output power of the motor as a function of the torque and the speed. And it turns out to be a quadratic curve simply because the output power is proportional to the product of the torque and the speed of the motor. So what you'll find is, of course, with a very low torque, we've got a high speed but very little power output simply because there's not a lot of loading on the motor itself, so it's not doing a lot of work. And then what happens as you increase the torque, the power, move, uh, power curve moves across like this, and you're operating on this power curve, and you find that there's a peak at about, so, or exactly half of the maximum output power or conversely uh, half of the maximum speed that's the uh, peak power point and then after that the power starts decreasing and that's because as the torque increases the speed keeps decreasing and that power output starts to decrease so what you want to do is you want to operate on this power curve in such a way that you maintain as much uh, maximum power as you can and so what you can do when you're coming over the hump of the curve and coming down like that you need to switch gears and move back to another point on the power curve and ideally on the same power level uh, between here and here and the ratio between this point and that point is simply the gearing ratio that you're switching between so if you're switching gears down what that means is you'll end up going from a low speed to a higher speed and a high torque down to a lower torque so what we need to work out is the ideal switching point between this point and that point in order to um, switch gears Okay, so given a particular gearing ratio that we've chosen, how do we calculate the uh, ideal switching point? Well, in order to do that, I've defined two different velocities or speeds. One is our low speed at which we're switching. So once we reach that low speed, we want to switch back to a higher speed by using that gearing ratio. So we've got our low speed at this point. We've got our high speed at that point. And what we've also got is that we want to make sure that the low and high speeds are symmetric around that center of that power curve which means that the average of the high speed and low speed should equal 50%. Uh, and the relationship between the low speed and high speed is simply the gearing ratio. So if we write those as equations, like I've done here, then what we've got here is that our low speed plus our high speed over 2, which is the average, is equal to a half or 50%, as well as that our low speed is equal to R, which is our gearing ratio, times our high speed. So by combining these two equations, we can work out the solution in terms of the gearing ratio for the low speed switching point and it just turns out to be very simply R over R plus 1. So for some example values of R, so if we've got R is equal to a third uh, that means our gearing ratio of one third, that means the ideal switching point for the low velocity, the low speed is a quarter or 25%. So once that speed reaches 25% of peak, so down here somewhere then we will switch across uh, to this point and keep within the same power level. Same with, for example, a gearing ratio of a half. Uh, that means our switching points are third or 33%. And again, for three fifths, it's equal to three eighths and 37 and a half. So that's what I've implemented in this particular gearbox mechanism. Um, in my particular gears, I've got the, a um, ratio between gear three and gear two. I've got three fifths and the ratio between gear two down to gear one is one third. So I've ended up using these switching points in my programming. So I've got um, you know, 38% and 25% as the two ideal down switching points for that automatic gearbox. All right, just demonstrate the automatic gearbox in action. So what I've got is an orange rotary catch here that selects between the three forward gears as well as a reverse gear. So the forward gears are done automatically and the reverse will be manual. Uh, that gear switching mechanism is driven by a large uh, motor and the overall driving mechanism has got an extra large motor for the output. So on the left here I've got my powered up app that I've written. Um, I've got a calibration button, start button and then I've got three manual gears as well as the automatic switch. So I just first of all calibrate the system. So that will calibrate that uh, gear selection motor so that it's in the correct position so it knows uh, the angle of the motor and the gear that it's in. I can then start the main motor like that and at the moment we're in manual mode and we're in gear 1. So we can switch from gear 1 to gear 2 by pushing that button there. You can see it switching and going faster. Gear 3 is even faster and then we've got the reverse gear as well. Uh, so back to gear 1. As soon as we go back into automatic mode it will then straight away switch to gear 3 because there's no torque in the output. 
Uh, we've also got the speed measurement there, which is going at around that 100 maximum speed. And then as soon as I put some loading on that output, uh, we can see that the speed's reducing. And like I said, my first gear is at 3 fifths, so I'm switching at 38%. So as soon as we drop that speed down to 38%, it will switch down to gear number two. Um, and now, of course, we're getting a lot more output power. And then if I drop that one down to 25%, it will switch to gear one. So as soon as we go from gear one at that 25%, you can see that the speed then switches around to 75 for the same loading because of that tripling of the gearing ratio. It's a gearing ratio of a third. If I now reduce that loading and go over 90%, it'll we'll switch back to two. And if I let go, it'll go back to three. So again, down to 25%, and we're in gear one. So yeah, this is the automatic gearbox. It works uh, really well. It's very powerful, and I look forward to putting this into some sort of vehicle into my uh, next video and actually demonstrate it fully in action, driving and maybe going up a ramp. So thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video, got something out of it. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye.